A hard one. Dear Bill, this is going to be a sad letter, so if you don't feel like dealing with this today, I understand. All right, yeah, fuck this letter. I'm not reading it. No. Truthfully, I think I'm writing you for the same reason Catholics go to confession. Don't worry, I know you can absolve me of my sins. Five years ago, I switched jobs, when I went, and when I did, I rolled my company 401k into what's known as a self-directed 401k. My family and I also moved that year and I took the proceeds from the house sale and dumped those into an individual account with the same broker. Oh, God. It wasn't much by some people's standards, but dude, if it's all you have, it's a lot. It wasn't much by some people's standards, but between the two accounts, it amounted to our life savings. I did what any sane person would do and bought a bunch of safe stuff and tried not to look at it very often. Then came the pandemic. I actually sold everything at the perfect time. Yes! Okay. Oh, please tell me you didn't get into Bitcoin. I think I was the second or third. It was the second or third week in February before everything really went to hell. But I took a long, long time getting back in. And when I did, I didn't play it safe anymore. Oh, boy, this has fucking too many twists and turns here. For a year, I did very well and doubled our life savings. And during that whole time, it never occurred to me the real risk I was taking. Cue the, oh, Jesus. Fast forward to yesterday, and it's been two solid years of bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. First, I was long when everything was going too down hard. What? First, I was long when everything was going, I think, going down hard in 2022. Then I was short when everything was just kept going up, up, up in 2023. An absolute epic meltdown brought by tens, on by tens, if not hundreds of individual bad decisions. So here I am. It's early February and there's basically nothing left. I know you're probably thinking I'm some degenerate gambling addict, but I swear it's not true. True. I don't bet on sports, only been to casino twice in my life and probably lost $150 combined. I drive a 20-year-old SUV and live in a regular house. Don't drink, don't smoke. I just got overwhelmed slowly at first, then all at once. My question is simple. How do I forgive myself? How does a man forgive himself when his selfish and foolish actions cost the people he loves? Thanks for any advice you can give and thanks for all the laughs over the years. God bless and go diddle yourself. Uh, easy. You take responsibility for your actions. You apologize to everybody and you promise that you're going to do everything in your efforts to make it right. And then you go out and you do that. And, um, the worst thing you can do right now is act like the game's over. Your life is over. This is a moment in it. And you know what? You've built yourself a great preamble to the story of your success of losing it all and coming back. Do you know how many successful people I know that have lost it all and then came back? Um, Success is not trying something, going out, being successful, and being, and then that's it. It's not a linear thing, um, journey. Success is is just stepping out into the abyss and free-falling into something. Hitting the water and then trying to swim. And there's moments where it's fucking white water and then it becomes calm and then there's a fucking waterfall. And what it is, is not allowing yourself to get too down or or too high and keeping between your ears positive, which is what you need right now, because right now you're beating yourself up. It's time that the pity party is over. Just tell your wife that. Just be like, listen, I want you to know that the pity, you know, I still feel unbelievable shame for what I did, but the pity party is over and I'm going to make you proud of me again. And then you just go out and you just fucking whatever the direction is that you want to be going in. I don't know what you do for a living. Um, And you build it back up again. And I'm going to tell you something. You will get, you know, if you do that, if you don't just look at this like this is the end of your journey, it's the beginning of your big comeback, okay? Um, I feel that, you know, your family's always going to love you. They're going to be, now they're going to be like, 
looking at you like you're going to teach them. You can actually give them a life lesson here. So the life lesson here is, you know, you don't stick all your eggs in one basket. And I hate to tell you this, but Wall Street, you might as well go into a casino. Casino, it happens quicker. But Wall Street is 100 percent fucking rigged. I mean, the House and Senate voted that they can't get tried for insider trading. They make a couple hundred grand a year. They're all, their portfolios, generally speaking, are worth upwards of $20 million. Okay, they're getting all kinds of insider trading. There's a bunch of different ways to make money still in this country. Um, and I think the fact that you're conservative at heart is a good fucking thing. It seems like you just got a little crazy. So just learn from this lesson. And uh, tell yourself you're going to figure it out and go fucking figure it out. Um, my stand-up career, I mean, I, I, I've had so many fucking ups and downs in this thing where, you know, sometimes things that were supposed to be good, this happens. It actually leads to like a down period or whatever. And I like I had periods... Starting off, nobody knowing who I was, and then all of a sudden, people knowing who I am, you know, getting big gigs, having a fucking manager and big agency, then all of a sudden, shit cools off. My agency, I've been dropped by, I, I don't know how many agencies have dropped me. Um, I've been fired by managers. I've gone all the way from being out here in LA and having a one bedroom apartment and driving a car to losing all of that, going back to my walkthrough bedroom apartment living with Bobby Kelly now and we shared the walk through bedroom part like he slept in the living room on a pull out couch you know becoming unincorporated and just went through a 6 7 year period of just like trying to put it all back together again just not being able to get arrested before I started to get it going again and um and even then like I I still have like like setbacks, you know, I, I got a really good role in this movie and I was thinking like, oh man, this is going to be a great thing. I'll get to do the talk show circuit. You know, maybe I'll get some good press. I can start getting some better acting roles. And then the pandemic comes and the movie comes out during the pandemic, does really well, but you know, didn't get to do the hype. I do old dads. I'm all excited about it. I'm really blah, 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 blah. And it fucking comes out during the strike. And it was this massive fucking hit that no one really talked about because it did that. And it's just, you know, those are like little gut punches. I mean, the amount of time that me and Ben Tischel put in that fucking movie, it was like a, it was like four years of our lives. And, and it just kind of, you know, came out and very quietly crushed. I mean, it did amazing. And it's definitely opened some doors. But, you know, I didn't get to do like what everyone was telling me. Oh, my God, when this thing comes out, we're going to get you on this show. You're going to be on the cover of this magazine. You're gonna <laughs> Nothing, none of that happened. So even when you're like being successful, like shit like this still fucking happens. You know what you say? You just go, well, what am I fucking special? Is no bad shit supposed to happen to me? Every fucking person in the business that I am in can sit down and talk way longer about getting kicked in the nuts than they can about going over the moon because um, that's kind of what life is. You know, it's like this fucking, you know, you win and then the next day there's another game and you might lose at that fucking game. So that's where you're at, man. You, you, you know, you had a bad season. You lost some games, you're on a losing streak, you just got to fucking turn it around. And success is really... So much of it is how you handle when you get your dick knocked in the dirt. And if you could just fuck it, go, all right, nice shot. Dust yourself up. You know, Hulk Hogan, that fucking, they go to drop your hand that last time and you stop it. You fucking put it up in the air and you start fucking nodding your head and you get up to one knee. That's just what you got to do. It just really is. And I'm telling you, man, don't believe all of this shit that people say about Hollywood where they, uh, you know, because these fucking idiot actors got to ram their politics down everybody's throat. So now everybody's like saying, fuck Hollywood. This whole idea that everybody is out here just fucking sitting around a pool, not doing anything like um, when I get into business to do a project, I am always astounded at how hard people work. They are like they're psychotic, the level that they work. They're fucking 
like workaholics. I mean, I'm talking 13, 14 hours a day and they don't get paid overtime. It's just, it's just what it is. Day in and day out, Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, your phone is blowing up with fucking a zillion goddamn questions when, you know, you're trying to shoot a TV series or a movie. It's like they're out there. Everybody is busting their ass. But what does the paparazzi show? They show people fucking vacationing in, in whatever the fuck they go, some island. Um, and even then that's work because they call the paparazzi. They're not the fucking feds. They don't know where you're at. They call the paparazzi. You know, they don't eat for fucking <coughs> a bunch of days and then they put on a bathing suit and then they got to have that. Oh, oh, you caught me. Fucking look, it's all bullshit. That's even their vacation is fucking work. So anyway, I'm sorry this shit happened to you, but you're going to fucking turn it around. OK, and and that what's great about life is when you get in the mindset that um, your success and your f- failure is nothing more than your decision. So whatever you decide to do, you can make the decision that this fucking event in the stock market is what destroyed you. And then you can go down to some stupid bar and tell your sad sack story to some other fucking sad sack who's also decided that they're a loser in life. Or you can just decide that, hey man, I fucking took a nice shot, got knocked on my ass, and I'm fucking getting up And I'm going to come back even stronger this time. All right? That's what I hope for you. Okay. There you go. There's your fucking halftime speech. All right. And that is the podcast, everybody.